Colonel Sutton Smith, 65, retired not uncomfortably on a supplementary private income, could not resign himself to the discovery of Roman coins under the grounds of his cottage. Interesting theory the Colonel has about those coins over two sherries, never a third, no matter how nakedly his guest may leer at the adamant decanter. He can, of course, complete his memoirs, extensive notes over a period of years, invitations, newspaper clippings, photographs, stretching into the past on yellowing dates. Objects go with the clippings, the notes, the photos. The Colonel decides to make his own time and constructs a simple calendar consisting of 10 months with 26 days in each month. The months have names like old Pullman cars, where the colonel had lived until his 18th year. Smell of soot and steam and iron and cigar smoke as the train jolts away into the past. The colonel is jolted back to the now. The colonel decides on this mild gray day to bring his time into present time. He looks at the objects on the breakfast table, calculating the moves to clear it. He measures the distance of his chair to the table, how to push chair back and stand up without hitting the table with his legs. He has discovered the simple and basic discipline of DE, do easy. He becomes an assiduous student of DE. Cleaning the flat is a problem in logistics. He knows every paper, every object, and many of them now have names. Knives, forks, and spoons flash through his fingers and tinkle into drawers. He has perfected the art of casting sheets and blankets so they fall just so. Cigarette packages and crumpled papers land unerringly in the wastebasket as a Zen master can hit the target with his arrow in the dark. DE is a way of doing. DE simply means doing whatever you do in the easiest, most relaxed way you can manage, which is also the quickest and most efficient way, as you will find as you advance in DE. You can start right now tidying up your flat, moving your furniture or books, washing dishes, making tea, sorting papers. Don't fumble, jerk, grab an object. Drop cool, possessive fingers onto it like a gentle old cop making a soft arrest. Guide a dustpan lightly to the floor as if you were landing a plane. Here is a student at work. The student considers heavy objects. The tape recorder on the desk taking up too much space, and he doesn't use it very often. So put it under the washstand. You will discover clumsy things you've been doing for years until you think that it is just the way things are. Now try again lifting, shifting, pivoting, dropping on the legs just so and right under the washstand. He is learning the simple miracles. The miracle of the washstand glass. We all know the glass there on a rusty razor blade streaked with pink toothpaste Quick the fingers go to work and the glass sparkles like the holy grail in morning sunlight. Learn to place an object firmly and quietly in its place and do not let your fingers move that object as they leave it there. When you put down a cup, separate your fingers cleanly from the cup. If you don't catch that nervous finger that won't let go of that handle, you may twitch hot tea across the duchess. <gasps> Every object you touch is alive with your life and your will. Don't tug or pull at a zipper. Guide the little metal teeth smoothly along, feeling the sinuous ripples of cloth and flexible metal. Never let a poorly executed sequence pass. There is always a reason for missing an easy toss. Repeat toss and you will find it. Surely this is the easy way. If you wrap your knuckles against a window jam or door, brush your leg against a desk, or catch your feet in the curled up corner of a rug, or strike a toe against a chair, go back and repeat sequence. You may experience a strange feeling as if the objects are alive and hostile, trying to twist out of your fingers, jump out at you and stub your toe or trip you. 
you will be surprised how far off course you were to hit that chair, that window jam, or door. Get back on course and do it again. How can you pilot a spacecraft if you can't find your way around your own apartment? It's just like retaking a movie shot until you get it right. And you will begin to feel yourself in a film moving with ease and speed. If you drop an object, break an object, spill anything, knock painfully against anything, galvanically clutch an object, pay particular attention to retake. You may find out why and forestall a repeat performance. No student of DE would have his pocket picked applying DE in the street, picking his route through slower walkers. Don't get stuck behind that baby carriage. Careful when you round a corner, don't bump into somebody coming round the other way. Everyday tasks become painful and boring because you think of them as work, something to be fumbled and stumbled over. Overcome this block and you will find that DE can be applied to anything you do, even to the final discipline of doing nothing. The easier you do it, the less you have to do. He who has learned to do nothing with his whole mind and body will have everything done for him. Let us now apply DE to a simple test. The old western quick draw gunfight. Only one gunfighter really grasped the principle of DE and that one was Wyatt Earp. Nobody ever beat him. Wyatt Earp said, It's not the first shot that counts, it's the first shot that hits. Point is, to draw, aim, and fire, and deliver the slug an inch above the belt buckle. That's DE. How fast can you do it and get it done? It is related that a young boy once incurred the wrath of Two-Gun McGee. McGee has sworn to kill him and is even now preparing himself in a series of saloons. The boy has never been in a gunfight before, and Wyatt advises him to leave town while McGee is still two saloons away. The boy refuses to leave. All right. You can hit a circle four inches square at six feet, can't you? All right, take your time and hit it. Take your time, kid. How fast can you take your time, kid? <laughs> 